So coming off a of prison break in the last season, and we'll see how this goes because this is actually not a story that I've ever told publicly before, but mm -hmm. we were sitting around one day, we were shooting the scene, and there was this um, porn video that was going around called Two Chicks, One Cup mm -hmm. that I've never seen. But we were sitting around a table and the guys started texting it to each other and watching it and laughing. And I don't give a fuck, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. do whatever you want to do. We weren't shooting, we were, they were setting up a shot. And then they started saying, oh, Callie's, that looks like you, that's you. And they went on this whole, like, it, be, it was a fascinating dynamic in retrospect because every one of them individually, almost to a one, was a friend. But they became a wolf pack, like, immediately. And I'm looking around, I'm the only girl, right? Like, this was, wow. what, 2008? Yeah. Yeah, it would have been 2008 because um, I just had the baby and and I was like no seriously knock it off I don't like being called a shit-eating whore um, and they doubled down and one of the people at that table at the time was a very very close friend and I was looking over going he's got the most power of anybody in this room all he's got to do is say, Put that shit out. hey, leave her alone. Yeah. That's all it would have taken. Like, yeah. no grandstanding, no fist fights, no nothing. Just fucking leave her alone. Nothing. And I got to a point where I was like, well, I'm not going to cry. So I'm not going to say anything. And I mean, producers, directors, first ADs, all standing around, all seeing this, all hearing this. And I was like, hmm. It was a moment, and this happens as a woman walking through the world when all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm way more vulnerable than I realized I was. And just emotionally, like, no, you know what's going to hurt me. But my fucking feelings were hurt. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, oh, I thought we were friends. But if you can sit here and call me a shit eating whore over my objections in the workplace, maybe I've misjudged this situation and I went home and I told my husband and then spent the next hour <laughs> dealing with you know I was like I need you to call I need this to be about me right now I need this not to be about like I you respect go on someone's ass, I respect yeah. the fact that as a yeah. man you want to go handle this yeah. but a that makes my life more complicated and b like I really just need to fall apart right now how many times do you think you've gone home and Josh and like I'm going to fuck somebody up at your job like <laughs> like, like 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 what do you well part of the thing about Walking Dead was never on that show right, 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 right. and so part of like to bring this back to your question the person that you were to me was somebody who was who shared my definition of loyalty and I've come to understand as an adult and especially in this business my definition of loyalty is like fucking medieval mm. do you know what I mean straight it's up. straight up Lancelot Knight of the Round Table that means something to me um and it doesn't mean that to everybody and I've learned to like let that go and be like hey you get to that's fine you think that's you know, life you or you think that's this business I think it's got to be both mm -hmm. um but I definitely think that there are people who have gotten into this business because they lacked the courage to do other things not to say that this business is easy right but I think sometimes maybe particularly men who aspire to certain aspects of masculinity and so they put them on rather than actually learning them from the inside yeah, out yeah, yeah. not always yeah uh certainly but what i found in you and in andy was like no when we say we got you we mean we're gonna start by creating a culture where that's not gonna happen and we never talked about it but like there was a level of safety on that set and a level of mutual respect. And like, it's funny because, you know, certain people who know me would think of me as strong or ferocious, but very little matters more to me than just feeling safe. And it's kind of staggering how often as a woman in the world <laughs> the dog's having a dream, totally having a dream. Yeah. Wake up, buddy. Um, 
we're just so often just not safe, mm -hmm. you know, either because there's some producer who's saying something or some director with his hands all over you or, you know, you got to walk around like Wolverine with your keys through your fingers at night. Like, I think those things are connected that I did the best work of my life, partly because in a weird way, you and Andy set up a perimeter and we're like, nothing's coming for you in here. So we can take big risks because nothing's coming for you in here. Mm. And if they do, they're coming through us and mm. we've got this. Mm. And the funny thing is what that brings out in me is like, cool, I got you too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, what I, was gonna say. I, I will cool, create yeah. this situation, you know, I will make this safe for you in different ways. I'm not going to like fight somebody to the death, but, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm going to emotionally make sure that like there are boundaries and that when you say things to me that are vulnerable, I hold them and I keep them and I keep yeah. them safe. Yeah. Um, that I think is where it's something that I've learned as a director that like you have to create this deeply safe environment for people to do dangerous work. You can't do dangerous work if you don't feel safe. What do you think about that? Like, what do you think about like the state of things now? Man, it's tricky. I mean, look, I was, I've been on set doing a love scene with a director calling while we're rolling. Just take your shirt off. Mm -hmm. What? Like, I don't have a nudity writer. Just take, just, it's not a big deal. I won't show it. Just take your shirt off. Like, what am I supposed to do? It's the beginning of my career. This guy's a big deal. Right. Like, you know, so like definitely an intimacy coordinator in that moment to go, what the fuck? Yeah, Cut the camera. Yeah, yeah, She's yeah. not going to take her shirt off. Like, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, yes, but in theory, man, it's tough because in theory, those, those protocols are there for when there needs to be an intercession between the relationship between the actors. But there's so much panic and fear on the part of productions and understandably but I think there are times where it feels like they're doing this shit because they think they should not because they genuinely care totally and real dumb move of me to think that like the studios care right. do you know what I mean right, like right right, right. That's not, that's, right. they would probably say, it's not my job. My right. job is to make a show. Right. The like covering your ass and caring are two totally different things. Thousand percent. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if anybody ever cared. Like, did Louis B. Mayer ever care? Right. You know, like, right. I think it's possible that that kind of nurturing environment is more of a fantasy in our heads mm -hmm. of, you know, whatever, of, of what theater was to us when we were young or whatever. Yeah, but I think there's also, there's like, safety can only be created by but but by people who are willing to lay down for each other like that's what safety is like safety is not about right covering your ass or or, or like it, it can't be about words it has to be willingness to take action that that feeling is kind of always there right like 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 how replaceable you are and, and it's cultivated yeah it's absolutely cultivated and it's it's purposeful right like that's what you mean by cultivated yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean but also you know i mean look in a lot of ways it's also true do you know what I mean? Like, if I step away from a job, there's going to be a hundred five eight brunettes right. who step up and go, "I'll do it," you know. And like, I'm aware of that when I negotiate, when mm -hmm. I like walk away from a job because a studio is not willing to offer me parity with the man who has the equivalent, you know, salary. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. the response is always, "We'll find somebody else who will do it." And I'm mm -hmm. like, "You're right. You mm -hmm. will." Mm -hmm. But I don't know that I can look my kids in the eye and be like. Mama's going to work for 40 cents on the dollar. See you, kids. Mm -hmm. I just don't know that I can do that. Mm -hmm. And, but they, you know, they know and they know that especially women, the more likely they are to take a lower salary because there's less opportunity. You know, and I, I think at a certain point, it becomes about like, do you want to do this anymore? You know, like, do you want to be an actor anymore? I like kind of leaning into certain kinds of directing because like, you know, the DGA says this is what you get for an episode. Mm -hmm. They don't negotiate differently with men than they do with women. Mm -hmm. This is what you get. Mm -hmm. It's on a schedule. Mm -hmm. It's less money, but it's equal money. I mean, mm -hmm. I took a huge pay cut to do Walking Dead, but I did it because the four of us had parity. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this isn't about money to me. Mm -hmm. This is about, are we doing the same job mm -hmm. for the same respect? Mm -hmm. Because you and I are both the breadwinners of our family. Mm -hmm. My kids don't deserve less mm -hmm. just because I happen to be a girl. That's right. Right. And so 
I think fundamentally, the only thing that I've really been able to come to is like we have to come up with a, like a deep rehabilitative forgiveness in this culture. It starts with asking for it. It starts with what does it mean for a man to go, I did not think that the thing I did would hurt you. Oh, because here's an interesting PS, that whole thing that happened on prison break. Then we go back and we do season five, like seven years later. And I'm sitting at a table with one of these guys. And I was like, I just got to tell you, that fucked me up for a minute. Mm -hmm. And he goes, what did? And what became obvious was that day had no significance to him. It was in my head for a long time. Right. Conversations with like my attorney going, hey, listen, if you go public with this, Fox will make sure you never work again. Like my career it happened to me and my career ended up on the line by the end of the phone call and like never how many times that happened would you say in your career that like people were like don't either either it came from you or an external source where people where it was just like dude if i say something here i'm fucked oh oh yeah countless right way more than i could count way more than i could count because also then there's a like it's your word against mine do you know what i mean and like all i've got to do is when they call me to say should I hire her? Go, she's difficult. Yeah. That's all. That's, <laughs> that's it. Job's over. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's John, Bam Bam the dog. Uh, first, on behalf of both of us and everybody from the Real Ones team, I just want to sincerely thank you guys for, for, for tuning in. The folks that I bring on the show, their family to me and uh, being able to tell their stories and bringing you into their world is something I'm, I'm just super proud of and uh, again, grateful that you guys tune in. We've decided we want to take things just a step further. We're going to introduce a Patreon community and basically what that means is if you become part of this community, look, I already bored Bam Bam. If you want to become a part of this community, you're going to be able to hear episodes early and all that, ad free and all that good stuff. But there's all this behind the scenes footage, all this stuff that we've shot um, that really brings you into the folks that we've had on the show, really brings you into their world. You're going to be able to do live chats with me and the folks that I bring on the show to talk about their world, talk about the issues that they're dealing with, about their triumphs and their tragedies. Just go to Patreon slash Real Ones on this website that you see right there right on the screen that's right in front of you. This whole idea was um, something about building bridges and, 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 and bringing people together and um, bringing folks that often don't get the mic and, and giving the mic to them. So the fact that you guys tune in means the world. Anyways, again, thank you. Uh, be good to each other out there. Rock and roll.